All right, everybody, how's it going? It is Tuesday, December 7th, 2021, and of course, we just finished with week 13 of the NFL. It was a pretty good week. We went 10-4 and four overall on the picks. I know a lot of people probably damn near went undefeated. I know uh, a couple people went 13-1, and one, so I'm, I'm sure everybody had a pretty good week. I, I don't remember seeing anyone with too bad of picks or anything, so hopefully everyone had a good week 14. Um, we went 10-4 and four to bring our record to 115, 78, and 1, uh, good for 59.5%. So we're just under 60% now, which is where you kind of want to be when you're doing picks, right? A row over 60%. So, you know, hopefully we can get there this week. Hopefully it's another good week. Um, I think this is the last week of bye week. So, so this is the last. Uh, there's so you can count all the teams are right there. Um, so the final teams to get them are the Patriots, Colts, Dolphins, and Eagles. So that's pretty cool for the Patriots and Colts, uh, who will meet week 15 on a Saturday. So... Uh, and, you know, these three teams probably needed their bye week. And, of course, the Eagles did as well. All three teams are pretty much in the playoff hunt with the Dolphins and Eagles being like question mark teams. But they're still like a game and a half behind of like the seven seed. So uh, with the Eagles, I think actually they might actually be the seven seed. I'm not 100 percent on that. I, I didn't look at the NFC uh, seven seed. I apologize. Um, but, yeah, so there's the bye weeks. So they uh, they get some rest at a good time, I would say, for, you know, their playoff hunt for the next, uh, what was it, 15, 16, and 17, three weeks after. So, all right, um, let's go into Thursday night football. Patriots also get a bye week as the number one seed, nine and four. Let's go. All right. Uh, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers heading into Minnesota to play the Vikings. The Vikings are three-point favorites with an over-under of 44 and a half. I have an asterisk there because... Um, I, I like uh, have questions about like what the Vikings are going to look like prior to that game. So like Thursday morning, I may have to switch my pick like I did with the uh, Cowboys and uh, Saints last Thursday because the Saints still had to cut like the two other tackles and Kamara out. So I'm wondering as long as the Vikings aren't as banged up as they were against the Lions, they they could win this game and I might have to reconsider this pick. But if they if they run the same team out that played the Lions, I don't think they could beat the Steelers. I could see um, Najee Harris having a big running game. Um, they threw the ball pretty effectively, like not the greatest against the Ravens, but they still won the game. Um, I don't, I don't know. The Vikings just are there to me. Something seems wrong, and I think it's because they have a number of players injured, and they just, they just didn't seem to have the same kind of edge on defense. They didn't seem to have um, this like explosiveness on offense that you're kind of used to seeing from the Vikings. Um, I don't know if Cook's going to play. I don't know if Thielen's going to play this week. You know, So you start to see the limitations of them start to stack against a really good Steelers defense. Uh, that can cause problems, get through a bad offensive line, stop the run game, um, You know, kind of create havoc in the pass game. They might be even able to pick off Kirk Cousins where the Lions really weren't able to do that very effectively. Um, lots of drop picks. So don't expect the Steelers to do something like that. They'll probably actually turn those into turnovers, whereas the Lions kind of let them drop and whatever um but yeah the vikings have had a uh they should they could even be realistically four and eight if they didn't get a walk-off field goal versus detroit uh earlier in the season so i don't know man the vikings are are way too talented of a team i guess injuries do kind of catch up to you but it kind of seems as though um they're they're going to be in the market for a new coach in the offseason uh, where as much as the Steelers are going to be looking for a new quarterback, the Vikings are probably going to be in a new coaches all across the board. There's probably no excuse to be potentially five and eight after Thursday night. Um, so, uh, by the way, the lines are all from FanDuel.com. I just put those on there for you know shits and giggles and for people to know who the favorites are. I don't really consider them when I before I do my picks, just so we're aware. Um, but yeah, so the Vikings are favored in this one, if that means anything. But also, uh, you know. If you gamble, do it responsibly and all that. Um, also, uh, make sure you leave your picks down below. I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as I can. Sorry if I've been a little bit lax a days ago on commenting back. I try to get to all of them. I've just been very busy with uh, grad school, so I apologize. Semester is coming to an end, though. I've only got this week and next week, and then it's uh, then I'm done with the first semester. I'm doing very well, if you want to know. Um, so that's good. But yeah, so I, I got the uh, Steelers. Make sure you leave your picks down below. Leave a like, all that YouTube crap. Um, but yeah, just, you know. Uh, the picks are more important. Make sure you leave your picks down below. I like to read those. Um, all right. Sunday afternoon. Let's get right into the good games of football. Um, it's an okay week. Uh, we have the Dallas Cowboys playing the Washington football team. Um, I hope I have the right record for the Cowboys. I, I think I do. I double checked. I triple checked. I'm pretty sure that's the right record for the Cowboys. But either way, they're either 7-5 and five or 8-4. and four. I really hope I didn't put the wrong record down for them. Um, 
and the Cowboys are four point favorites with an over under of 48 and a half because I made sure that I like went and double checked um all right yeah I, I Washington's been playing very good football the last few games they're on a winning streak they've been playing great defense again um but they do run into a Cowboys team that I think is starting to figure out how they can actually effectively move the football. If they can commit to using Tony Pollard and then uh, Zeke to get the short yards, Pollard to be the main scat back, then I think they can actually start to formulate this really effective offense. Their offense is going to have more cohesion after Cooper's a couple weeks back from uh, the COVID list. And, you know, they've got these three receivers now. Everyone's going to be healthy. Um, there's going to be, again, cohesion. They probably have an idea of how to use the run now. So I could see their offense being pretty fixed up. And this really, and, you know, with Washington's offense being, you know, kind of limited as it is. And that's not a shot at Washington. They're a great, they're a good little team that wins on their defense. And that's a, that's a high compliment. Um, but I do wonder if you're going up against a pretty good Cowboys team when they want to be pretty, cons if they're, they're just kind of weirdly inconsistent at times. Uh, but they are eight and four, but in their winning games, um, I think they're going to have their coaches back. I think they're going to have a number of other players back. Like, so the Cowboys are kind of coming into their own and kind of getting healthy, getting everybody back at a good time of the season. And that's kind of why I'm liking the Cowboys in this one. Plus, they, they're kind of in this mode where they're only two games ahead of the Eagles and the football team, so they kind of have to win now. So I kind of like that as an added dimension into this game. And I think the Cowboys in a more... In this kind of game, I, I like them. Um, not that Washington won't rise to the occasion. I see this being a close game as, as evidenced by being a five-point game so uh yeah this is going to be close it's going to be a good one it should be a classic dallas washington dogfight so I, I can't wait to see who wins i think the cowboys pull it off uh basically because i think their offense is a lot better and uh despite washington's defense being better it's not it's not leagues better than the cowboys uh defense so they're pretty while it's better than the cowboys it's like yeah the gap between the cow like here's how i break it down the gap between dallas's offense and washington's offense is so like big to me that the gap between the cowboys defense and the washington defense seems irrelevant if that makes any kind of sense um all right uh titans and jaguars not much to say here by the way i'm only going to go over games with a lot like there's like three good games or, like you know how it goes titans versus jaguars um the only thing that makes this somewhat exciting is that it's a division game and you really never know how those are going to go but i can see the titans coming off a of bye week being a mother like they're going to be hard to beat they're going to be angry they're going to want to win this game um and they and i don't see them looking past the jaguars in any capacity give me the titans 28 14 they're eight and a half point favorites um this game too like who cares uh the seattle seahawks versus the houston texans uh the seahawks are seven and a half point favorites with an over under of 42 and a half um pretty irrelevant game neither team's really going to contend for the playoffs i mean the seahawks aren't eliminated the texans are uh i don't know the seahawks win because they're just a good team and the texans aren't and i think the texans are just i think the texans have acted are tanking now like they realized oh shit we were winning games what are we doing um here's another good game uh the las vegas raiders are going to play the kansas city chiefs in kansas city chiefs are nine and a half that's too big a line chiefs are nine and a half point favorites with an over under 48 and a half um so the Raiders lost to the Washington football team last week and only scored 16, 15 points. I predicted they would lose 17-16. Washington won 17-15. Um, with the way the Chiefs have been playing defense, it's going to be, it could be a similar game to that. But I do see, like, because I think Washington's defense overall is better than the Chiefs defense, who's playing very good right now. I'm not going to take that away. The Chiefs are playing good football. I even like the fact that Mahomes isn't the reason they're winning games because to me it shows that they're doing just enough on offense to win these games and depending on a defense that to me shows a step forward as a team that to me shows an evolution of a quarterback who isn't just like oh fuck it somewhat Tyreek down there Travis down there and just throw it deep like he's taking what's in front of him doing what the game's providing him and that's the sign of a step forward in my opinion um I could be wrong about that but so I I could see the Raiders defense you know um kind of causing problems for Mahomes, but they'll probably be able to rise above it, score what they need to. I see the Chiefs defense potentially scoring against this Raiders offense because the Chiefs been playing pretty good defense. Um, I don't know. I, there's just something off about the Raiders this year. Like they look good, then they don't, then they look good, then they don't. That's kind of how they feel right now. So in a, in a high intensity division game, if this was like, I don't know, if the Raiders were playing Houston or Seattle, I'd, I'd choose the Raiders in a blowout. Um, or even, uh, I don't know, like the Jaguar, but like, 
the Chiefs feel like too good a team. Like like Rich Basacci is probably just going to be out coached here, and that's another reason. So I like the Chiefs offense a little more. I like the Chiefs defense more. I think the Chiefs can out coach the shit out of the Raiders in this game. Um, the Raiders are going to bring it because they do very well in this game. But ultimately, I think that was a little bit more Gruden than Basaccia. So give me the Chiefs, obviously. All right, Sunday afternoon football. We have the Jets and the Saints. Another uh, really great game. Uh, the Saints will head to New, uh, New Jersey to play the Jets. Uh, the Saints are five and a half point favorites with an over under of 43 and a half. I don't think the Saints really have to field much of a team to beat these guys. Um, um, I guess I'll revisit this game potentially, like if like the tackles are still out and Kamara's still out. But I, I really don't know if that makes much of a difference. Um, I really don't know what they're doing at quarterback, though. So I guess we'll know more. This game's kind of in a limbo to me because I really don't know what the Saints are doing on offense. Like, I don't think anybody does. Um, yeah, I know, right? I know. I took the Falcons this week. Um, kind of a shock decision. Uh, I feel very nervous picking Atlanta this week because this is now, I think, straight weeks I've picked them and I think they've won. Like when I've picked them in the la like how I've been picking Atlanta the last couple weeks, I've actually been picking them well. I've I've gotten every game right with them in like four weeks. It's been fucking wild with me. Every time they win, I've been picking them again. When they lose, so it kind of feels like I got this Panthers team or the Falcons team kind of ebbed and flowed. I can't pick the Panthers for shit. Every time they win, I don't pick them. When they lose, I don't pick. I like I can't figure out Carolina. Um, so the Panthers are three point favorites with an over under of forty three and a half. I think the Panthers are going to lose this game because they just fired Joe Brady, their offensive coordinator. Um, I don't know what they're about to look like on offense. I don't know if they have an idea of P.J. Walker, Cam Newton. I don't know what their run game is going to look like now that McCaffrey's out. Their offensive line is kind of bad. Um, Cam really didn't look that great. Now they're running a whole new offense again. Um, I think that's a recipe for disaster against the division opponent. Um, yeah, that's basically my, my major reasoning. I don't think it's a good idea to upheaval your whole, you know, the whole offensive system when you're about to go play a division game, um, especially when you have like no idea what's going on at quarterback, your running back situation just went down, things aren't looking the greatest, and now you have a whole new system you're going to have to use. So that, that those are major flags for me for the Panthers uh, heading into this game, and that's why I'm going to pick the Falcons, 28-24. A lot of these games are... Oh, here we go. Here's one of the better games. Um, I was surprised to find out that the Browns were favored, but then I remembered Marlon Humphreys out for the season, and I went, fuck, but I'm not going to back off this pick. Um, the Browns are the two-and-a-half-point favorites with an over-under of 42-and-a-half. I think this is going to be a running game. I think both teams are going to utilize the run. Devonta Freeman, Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt. I think both teams are going to get very heavily running the ball in this one. I could see the... You know, Lamar's probably going to revert a little bit and probably not throw it as much as he has been. A little bit more running, which is fine. He's a running quarterback. Um, so, uh, these are the kind of games that the Ravens win. Like, when nobody thinks that they're going to be able to. Like, uh, they're, you know, they're going into Cleveland. They're the they're, they're dog. Uh, they're an underdog in this one, technically. I, I don't think it's unfair to say that the Browns still have like injury issues like I still have major questions about what Baker is going to look like he hasn't looked good in several weeks because of the injuries um, I know Lamar hasn't looked good but technically Lamar the reason he's he's slumped out is because of that flu if he's feeling better then hopefully you know he could he could bust out of it long before Baker couldn't I think the Ravens kind of can get out of it this week um they do very well historically against the Browns. You know, they other than I think earlier this season, they usually beat. They can beat the Browns pretty well. Um, I went and looked up the history. I think so. I, I hope I read that right and I didn't read it backwards. But either way, if the Browns were healthier, I'd pick them in a heartbeat just because of the shape of the Ravens right now. But I think since both teams are pretty banged up, they're like equally as banged up. Um, from what I've seen out of the Ravens and the Browns this year, I, I feel like the Ravens are the better team um, in their current states. But if they were both healthy, I'd be like, the Browns are the better team. They're a better roster. Um, but the Ravens are just, uh, they're, they have a couple things working for them this year. Uh, luck. <laughs> no, first and foremost, they're like the luckiest team in the NFL. Uh, the fact that they've played the way that they have and they're 8-4 means that they're it's either skill or luck. And I don't know which one it is. Um, good coaching. I'll give the coaching edge to the Ravens. Um, Better quarterback right now because of injuries. Uh, and I don't know, man. It's just, I see, I feel like the Ravens respond better to adversity than a lot of teams do in the league. So 
they'll, they'll probably respond to the Marlon Humphrey thing and somehow win this game. Um, this is one of the ones I'm the least positive about, but it's also my upset. Of the, it's one of my upsets. I have three big upsets this week. The, the, the Steelers, the Ravens, um, and I think you'll, you'll find another one out as we get to it. So let's, uh, let's advance forward into the one, uh, four o'clock games, right? But yeah, it's my, one of my upsets. I, I just feel very strong. Like that's gone up by the way. It was like minus one when it opened. So people are really strong on the, uh, Browns winning this one. Um, oh shit. All right. Uh, Giants at uh, Giants and Chargers. Um, Someone has a theory that the Giants win and then lose, win, lose. But it's like they're four and eight. They'd be five hundred, or yeah, they could be six and six if that was the case. But Chargers are ten and a half point favorites with an over under of forty five and a half, and I have the Chargers winning quite handily. Um, I mean, I, I I don't know. Do they even match up well against the Giants? Did the, like did the Giants do anything to like? I don't know. I don't. I don't know if the Giants do anything to stop, but the Chargers do well. So, you know, maybe if the Giants were like six and six, this game would be a little more entertaining. But like, I don't know. The way the Chargers just were able to handle the Bengals, I, I think they kind of figured a few things out. Um, and clear, they they beat up on bad teams too. So like, the Giants are probably gonna get smoked on. Um. Oh boy. Congrats to the Detroit Lions getting their big first W last week. That one ten and one looking pretty sweet. The sell they sellied harder than some teams would if they won the Super Bowl, which is hilarious. Um, they play the Denver Broncos in Denver. The Broncos are eight point favorites with an over under of forty three and a half. I have the Broncos winning twenty to sixteen. I th I don't know if this game is going to be particularly close. I don't know if the Lions are going to look good in this game at all. Um, the Denver's defense is pretty good and they looked pretty good against the Chiefs. They just, you know, their offense isn't the greatest and our defense isn't going to be enough to probably stop them. Um, so. Uh, another really good game with uh, major playoff ramifications for either side. It's going to be the San Francisco 49ers taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, the Lions minus one for the 49ers. So like it's essentially pick them. Uh, 47 and a half is the over under. Um, I got the Bengals winning here. Um, yeah, they looked really bad against the Los Angeles Chargers, um, and that's a little bit concerning, but they also came back late. The Chargers, I don't, I don't know. Chargers are a weird team that, like, play, like, they're loaded, but they, like, play bad, and uh, it's hard to figure them out. Um, I went and looked at stats of the Bengals, and they seem to do pretty well against, like, here's my reasoning in this game, I guess. Um, the 49ers uh, are, you know, they're, they're, they're the run team with, that uses uh, Gar uh, Kittle to get up, down the field as well. Um, so when I was looking at the uh, Bengals um, defensive situation, right, I was looking, I was like, they do all right against the run. So they should be able to shut that down. Um, they're, they're an athletic defense that can play the run pretty well. Uh, they have a couple games where they got slashed up by like Brown or by like by the Browns. But it's like, well, yeah, that's Nick Chubb. It's, like, what are you going to do? Um and then you've got the, uh, and then, you know, the, the, <laughs> this game isn't easy to figure out either. There's a couple games where it's like, I, I don't have solid explanations, but I just really like the Bengals in this matchup. Um, I don't know if the 49ers have the corner play to stick with the Bengals in this one. I think the Bengals have a wide array of weapons. Um, while I think the 49ers do have a good defense, um, I, I could easily see this game breaking down and becoming a shootout. Just, I, I don't know why that is. I think corners are pretty, I, I don't know, man. It's just, whenever I think about this game, I'm like, well, what happens if it's a close game? What what offense do I trust more? I trust the Bengals offense unironically more than I do the 49ers offense on every level right now. I like Burrow more than I like Jimmy Garoppolo. I like the Bengals receiving core more than them. It's like with one, it, it, not even with one exception. I like Chase way more than fucking um, uh, the multi-tool over in uh, San Francisco, Debo. Um, yeah. I don't know. I just, I feel like this is, uh, like, as good as, the, you know, the 49ers have kind of have been and up and down. It's just like, eh. They'd have won last week. I'd probably pick the 49ers because they'd clearly be on a, uh, like on a streak. But it's like, I don't know. I feel like we uh seen Jimmy G and company come back down to earth a little bit. Um against a pretty bad Seattle team, even though Seattle always beats them. It's just that, I don't know. I feel like it was like, oh yeah, the 49ers aren't that good with Jimmy G at quarterback. So 
Watch the Bengals get a lot of pressure on the guy and try to, uh, you know, throw Jimmy off his game. And I can see that easily happening. And if it really does break down into like a kind of shootout, I just trust the Bengals way more. Um, in that one. All right, here we go. Here's another good four o'clock game. Uh, the Buffalo Bills will ta travel to Tampa to take on the Buccaneers. The Bucks are three point favorites with an over under of 52 and a half. Um, I've got the uh, Buccaneers winning for a few reasons. Um, number one, and the most important, is Tom Brady owns the Tampa or the Buffalo Bills with every fiber of his being. Uh, they never really beat this dude, not often. Um, they got like five or six wins off the dude in, in his entire 40 games versus the Bills. So uh, I like that. Um, I really have questions about the Bills' passing defense now that they're going to go up against an actual passing offense um, because. The Patriots, yeah, I get it. It's hilarious. The Bills just lost to a team that only threw it three times and ran it a bunch. Um, the Bucks are going to be able to throw it. And so, like, so here's my question is, do the Bills have enough secondary to simultaneously cover all those Bucks wide receivers? And if the Bucks want to decide to run it, are they going to be able to, like, use their safety still? Because hide and pull, uh, pull are going to have to be used to cover the corners and stuff. Or, you know, to cover extra receivers. But if they use them in the run, then the guys are going to be single covered. Some guys might get wide open. So this is where I'm starting to wonder if the Bills, you know, injury to Trey White is going to be a bigger deal than it is. Going up against the best passing offense in the NFL, I believe. That could be a really ugly situation for these Bills going forward. Um, and yeah, I just, I, you know, will, will they look better? Yeah, I mean, the wind was terrible, but like... I don't know, man. The Bills, uh, they're pretty one-dimensional on offense. Their defense seems to uh, be susceptible to the run. like Because you got to remember, they were stacking like 10 guys in the box against New England and still gave up all those running yards. It, I mean, it was 3.5 a carry. But like, say they're playing the Bucks, who can also throw it. If they're averaging 4.4 yards a carry almost and they're throwing at will, you're, that's a long. That's going to be a long afternoon for the Bills. Um, they're going to have to prove to me that they can stop the pass and the run at the same time. Um, before I, you know, before they can compete with a team like Tampa, who can run and throw and do whatever they damn well please, uh, you know, and uh, and also the Bills' offensive line is very suspect. Um, the Patriots were all over Allen all day yesterday, so I would imagine that Tampa is going to be able to get similar pressure on on Josh. Yeah, that's why I think so. Yeah, uh, will the Bills stay in the game? I think so. They're a good offense. I think they'll score late and they'll store they'll score when they can, but. Ultimately, I just don't think they have enough to compete to stop Tampa. All right, Sunday Night Football. This game is going to be ugly. <laughs> There's just really not a whole hell of a lot to say here, right? The Packers are 10, 12 and a half point favorites with an over-under of 44. Um, will the Bears compete? Probably not. The, the Packers are a very good team this year, and the Bears, they'll probably try really hard for a little while, but then it'll just get ugly. I mean, the... Uh, the, the Packers defense is really good. There's rumors they're going to have like half their dudes back. And if that's the case, it's going to be a nightmare for the Bears. Um, give me the Packers and probably won't won't be a very good game. I'm surprised this wasn't flexed. It's because the Bears Packers history, but like this should have been flexed out. Uh, Monday Night Football, probably one of the game, probably the game of the week, actually, is the Rams playing the Cardinals. And this is my major upset of the week, actually. Um, this is my big upset. I think you were probably like, oh, OK, he's picking the Rams. Yes, I am. Um, despite the win earlier in the season, I feel like both teams have kind of changed. There's been a little bit of evolution. We've seen the Rams go through a hard time and come out of it now. Uh, we've seen the Cardinals. They're coming back from injury. Uh, they're coming, you know, this team's starting to come back and, you know, starting to look good. We'll see how uh, the, uh, the whole offense looks now that they've had a, a week back together. Um, they had their warm-up game. The Cardinals are three-point favorites at home with an over-under of 51.5, and, and I get it. Most people are going to be going Cardinals in this game because of the way Stafford and the Rams have played against good teams. Now, one of the things I'm, I'm wondering about is if the Cardinals had played a better team than the Bears last week, would they have won the game with the way that they played? I don't think so. I think if the Bears... <laughs> <laughs> throw like five or four interceptions and just play like garbage the cardinals could have came got like they like the bears almost came back on them somehow like it was like what 33 to 20 and i know that that's garbage time but that makes me wonder i've seen a couple cardinals games where the cardinals have had these weird big leads and then like they just don't score again um and teams 
that have that tendency, when they play a quarterback like Matthew Stafford, will lose those games to Matthew Stafford. Those are the rare 10 wins he gets versus like really good teams that get up to big leads and then coast on them. If you do that in this game, and I think the Cardinals are going to be guilty of doing this because they're going to, I think, try to do what they did in the first one, get up big and then coast, get up big, coast. Um, if they do that, they're, they're probably going to lose this game because um, I don't know. I f this is, this is like a tough one because it's like Stafford plays like garbage against these teams. Again, in these games, in these moments, these are not Stafford games. But I feel it. I feel good about this one. Um, I've been pretty solid with some upsets this year, and this feels like a, another one. Um, I also wonder like how the offense is actually going to look because you know you never know with uh, you know division games go weird uh by the way the rams also have a whole like a very good record versus the cardinals uh minus literally like that one game i think he wins a lot uh versus the cardinals mcveigh so we'll see i like the rams a lot in this game um it's my upset pick and i know most people are going to disagree so it's fine I didn't have the best reasoning other than like, I wonder if the, like, it's just the way that the Cardinals have had several big leads and then like, it'll be like 34 to like 10 and then the final will be like 37 to 26 and I'm, or 23 and I'm like, yeah, the slightly better team might've won that game. Like, it's just one of those things where I'm like, hmm. And you know, I don't know. I feel like the Cardinals are due to lose a game. And it'll be like one of those, oh, did the Cardinals really lose type games? And then the AFC West is back in, or the NFC West is back in a chaos and disarray. Um, so yeah, I'm picking the Rams. Oh well. Um, I have a feeling I'm about to fuck my pick record up all this week, though. That's a little concerning. Um, but yeah, we're 115, 78, and 1. So hopefully, you know, those picks don't come back to burn me or bite me in the back. Um, I think I did a pretty good job this week. Let me know what you think down below. Leave your picks down below. Uh, leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you knew, enjoyed all that. We we're about to hit 7,000 or we've already hit it. So thank you all very much. Uh, we've hit the goal. We've hit the unlikely goal of 7,000 by the end of the year. Um, I know when we started the year, it was nowhere near there. So that's hilarious. Uh, thank you guys so much. Um, we're going to keep going. Maybe next year we'll hit about eight or 9,000. We'll, we'll figure it out um, when the year starts off. We'll make a new goal and see if we can hit it. I appreciate everybody for helping out. Um, and thank you for letting the, the video is doing well. And yeah, I appreciate it, everybody. Um, what else? Um, no, that's about it for this week. Um, yeah, those are, those are my picks. Uh, hope you, hopefully you enjoyed it all and all that. Do all that YouTube stuff. Leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Uh, leave a comment, blah, blah, blah. And uh, yeah, week 14, here we go. I don't really have much watching interest this week, but. It's probably why my picks are probably like seem very interested because the Patriots aren't playing on my own oh, shit. Um, but anyway, uh, let me know what you think. Uh, thanks a lot. Have a good rest of your day, night, whenever you listen to this. And uh, peace out. Go Patriots. Bye bye. And Lions. Woo. One ten one. Woo.